morning. It's just starting up now. Good morning. How are you all? Great time of the morning. Great time of the day. Just getting set up. Just so I can make sure I get all the comments accessible and available. Um, there we go. Hope you're all well. We'll just uh, just wait a moment if you just want to just settle yourself in, um, ease into your own space. Uh, we'll, we'll get started in the next minute and a half. Maybe if you've got a, a pen, paper, there will be some things that we'll be going through and discussing and um, look forward to sharing with you more this morning. For those of you that are not used to being up at this time of the morning, it's a, it's a great time of the day. Many of you get a chance to get up and watch the sunrise or do any sun gazing. It's um, well worth looking into. It's an amazing experience. But um, we'll get started in, in just over 30 seconds. I might just check the, the comments just to make sure that they're working. If you can, um, hello, Lisa. Um, if you just want to just put in a quick hi or a hello or where you're from, um, it would be great. Uh, we had a few problems with the comments last time. We just want to make sure that they're working and, and coming through. Hi, Beverly. Okay. I want to want to share with you today and what we're going to go through. Hello, Tracy. Ann. What we're going to go through is the first of three sessions. And my intention in these sessions is to share with you not a profound practice or something that you can take away and do in your own time, but it's to stimulate something within you that wants to find a long-term truth within your own self. Some parts of what we'll be going through will be able to identify the fiction or the deceit that we may be under in our own lives. It's to understand what I would suggest that also in nature that exists exactly within us and precisely within us is the process that we go through to be able to elevate and embrace all of what we are. For many of us, we see such a small sliver, such a small amount of what we actually are and uh, let's say challenged at times by the fact that many of those aspects of what we are are not understood, are not recognized. And we start to become confused with the type of life or the experiences that we're having because we're not aware of our fullness, of not just the who, but the what. And this is a big thing for, for many of us these days is we've learned to become a who. And a who is something that relates to every single other person around you. It's a comparison. It's how you fit in. To be a who, you have to be relating to the other who's. What we're going to be looking into at a more deeper level is the what. And when we can start to consider ourselves with a much bigger question, start to understand our own truth from what we are is where we start to discover our true capacity. So I would ask you as we're going through this to make notes, to become present to those notes and to take them away. And I will be sharing some things that you can do with them in your own time. That's very natural. That's very simple, but is very powerful. I'm wanting to allow you to come to a place and a time beyond this, that if you believe in and resonate with what it is that we're sharing, that we can share more with you. But these next three weeks are about a discovery into your own self. And to recognize why it is that with all of the opportunity, all of the significance that exists around me, how do I access that? Not occasionally, not randomly, not in a breakthrough experience, not, not in a certain situation when I'm sharing that with someone else, a teacher or a guide in any particular way. But in each and every moment of life, how do I identify with and maintain being the most important part, what it is that I determine from life? 
How is it that I can bring that to me in the fullness of my own heart? I want to go through those points and more today. So the first part of I want to look at today is we're, all, we're in a world at the moment where there's some significant things that are happening. There's some real changes that are going on. And many people are, are a bit confounded and scared as far as how they move forward, what restrictions, what controls are going to be taken away from them or placed upon them. And for many of us, it's a, it's a misunderstanding of the information that we've been fed for such a long period of time. Some of us consciously and some unconsciously. But what's most important now is coming into a space where we can start to discern and find our own truth. Neighbors, friends, and other sources of information all have conflicting stories. So this, the story is what do we do? What do I do in each and every moment to allow myself to find my own truth and prosperity? What do I do to find my own ease and peace in each simple moment? What is it that I can do as an example to many others around me whilst being true to myself? For many of us, we're being told at the moment what we should do, what we should believe, how we should act. The very nature of our own certainty and our own truth is to find our own rhythm, to find our own resonance inside and be able to sit in concert with that by choice in each and every moment, to live from this space, to challenge the norms and start to embrace all of what we are. But one of the most challenging things in moving forward, which is where most of us stop, is the release, is the letting go. I want you just to consider that through life, everything that we've been shown is about accumulation. It's about taking things on. It's about learning knowledge. It's about taking things on at a particular mo moment in our life where we remind ourselves or hold on to information that may be valuable at some stage in the future. We've only learned to accumulate. We've only learned to hold on. And we do so continually. We say yes in favor of not being seen as inconsiderate, as not being seen as selfish. We continue to keep taking on and taking on to such a period in, in our lives that we become overwhelmed, that we become stressed, that we put ourselves second, third and fourth, thinking that we will deal with what we need to deal with later rather than prioritizing ourselves in that moment. This is an unnatural practice, but it is something that is native to all of us. For us to be in communication and con connection with our own self. But it comes back down to the how to. And how do we do that through this fiction that we've created in our own eyes, in our own ears, as far as what we are? I mean, for each of us, how often have we sat down and considered the truth of me? How often have we sat with our own words, with our own pen, with our own paper, and asked ourselves, what am I? What is it that I have? Not what is it that I want? What is it that I want comes from a place that I am completely unaware of the capacities that I have as an individual. To sit in want is, is to suggest that I don't have. But we've got to start from a presumption that, that we have everything that is required of us in each and every moment, that everything around us exists only to support us. It's our challenge to come to understand that. Once we come to understand that, we don't need healing. We don't need fixing. We don't need the interruptions of those around us to teach us that. What we can come to understand is our very own self and our only teacher that exists. Now, these are all great theories, but it comes back down to the how to. How do I do that? Now, if we look at schooling, we've always been looked and asked from a very young age to trust in others, to come to a common answer to come to a group understanding. Often acquiescing our own wants, needs, or when we're asked to do something different, or when we ask to do something different, we're looked upon as disruptive. For us to challenge our own selves is to accept difference in others. And we went through this a little bit last week, is that difference in others is what love is really about, that we can all appreciate someone's similarities. But to truly love someone is to accept them for their differences. And the key is, and the message here is, how do I do that for myself? How do I take those things that I judge, those things that I disown, 
those things that I push away from my own life, how do I find myself moving into the holding on of them? How do I allow myself to become present to them? How do I recognize that those things that have not been of comfort for me, that are different to everyone else, how do I not only revel in them, but how do I celebrate them and own them in such a way that is authentic in my life? How do I start creating a different story, not just in my own eyes, but in the world around me to create an environment that it is that serves me? For far too long, we've been caught up in words like selfish, which all of us, when we're considered or when we're presented with the word of being selfish, we start to take a backward step. We don't want to be seen that way. We want to be seen as compassionate, kind and considerate. So the truth then becomes, how do we learn to prioritize ourselves? How do we start to put ourselves in a way where we can gracefully hold space for our own self? How is it that we can do that? I'd ask you, are there people that are here that every single day that they make a priority of getting themselves to their highest expression before they go and present to the day? I mean, because I'd ask you to consider if you're getting up in the morning and you're rolling out of bed and you're rushing off to, to do the day, there's a great possibility that what you're experiencing and what you're presenting to life will be a shadow of what you actually are. And it's often that shadow that becomes your identity and your reality. If we are not of a morning getting up and directing our attention straight to our own self and understanding our capacity to be able to maintain that upon our own self, to elevate and bring ourselves into our highest state of being. If we are not practiced in that, if we are not doing this each and every day, we are being influenced and we are playing the lottery in hope that we will find our own truth. Now, it's not that no one wants to do this. It's not difficult to get up early. But the issue is, is understanding the how to. Because if I understood how to, I would do that all the time. If I recognized that when I did that, the way that I felt and the way that people reacted to me was very different. If I started to see that my environment changed because I started to prioritize myself as I put myself first, so do others. I find respect, I refine attention. And these simple things that I provide for myself then start to present in my environment. But if I choose to get up and do a whole range of other things and prioritize them, and then expect people to listen to me, to honor me, to respect me, to be a part of my life in a way that may be complimentary, that would be inauthentic if I'm not doing that for my own self. Now, this is not about having a specific way and an only a single way of doing things. This is about you finding what it is that causes you to connect with and resonate with yourself in each and every way in each and every day. Because until that is done, until we start to move towards that, there's a challenge. And I'll give you, for those of you, and I'll just ask for those of you that don't have a process like that, can I just ask for, for the people that are that are online? If you do have a process like this, just, just a simple yes or, or a no, I'd love just to get a, a feel for those of you that are listening. I'm from Singapore and California. Good morning. So just asking, you know, do you have a process that you follow each day? And it's an important thing to come to your own realization and share that at this moment, because it's taking ownership of that, whether that's a yes or a no, it's not right or wrong. It's a starting point. And the whole notion of life, and I can share this, and I would say it's one of the most important things that I would teach and have become aware of, because it is so simple, that it, most of us are out there seeking wisdom. We want answers. We want something that we need to fix. We have a dissatisfaction with our life that we want to address. But the thing is, if we can't identify that dissatisfaction, if we don't take the time to recognize we, where we are beginning from, no wisdom, no information, no course, no insight is going to provide us with momentum or movement forward. When we start to connect with ourselves each and every morning, this is the truth of what we face. 
we start to understand if we are not in a great state that we can start to become present to that. We can become at ease with it and we can effectively change and resonate in a very different way. If we are, we can recognize that and we can build upon that. But at each time, each morning, getting to the same space, sometimes it takes a little bit more effort. Sometimes it takes a little bit more attention. But either way, as an individual, it's about us becoming present to what it is that we are in each and every moment. It's about us being resonant with it, what it is that exists around us and preparing for the day. See, that the very nature of our, of our intuition is our ability to perceive energy as information. And our intuition goes far beyond what it is that we see in front of us. When we get up in the morning and we're feeling a little bit off, it's not because we've done something wrong. It is a stimulation to prepare ourselves for what is coming into our life that day. And it's the very notion of all of life. If we're not prepared for what it is that's coming, we are going to miss those opportunities of love, of appreciation and elevation in our own life. If we are not prepared for the moment before the moment comes, we will find ourselves reacting, becoming desperate, rather than allowing ourselves to grow and move forward through our own life. It's the very navigation of our own experience that's most important, not accumulating an amount of knowledge or information that we can then repeat at a later date or occasionally apply. So if you don't have a practice like that of the morning, here's something that I would share with you. And here's something that I would say is a, is a very significant practice, but it is very simple. And it leads to what we're talking about today, which is purging. Because for most of us, when we are sitting in a place of dissatisfaction and we're wanting to bring something into our life that we believe is going to elevate us, that it's going to make things better, that's going to improve our relationship with life. We need to recognize that there is certain things in our lives, certain toxicities that we are holding on to. And I want to share some things here in regards to a toxicity. A toxicity in your life is anything that is foreign to your truth. Anything that does not belong. Now, this can be energy that we take on from loved ones, our partner and our friends. It can be our children's energy. It can be those around us that we aspire. But when we take on someone else's energy and we hold that within us, that is an interruption to our own state of being. To honor and to acknowledge and to observe is a very different thing. But I can suggest to you one thing through my experience is that all disease, all sickness begins with the taking on and the holding on to other people's energy as we believe what we have is not full in supporting our life. We've worked with many, many people that have overcome significant disease. And at the root of all of that is what people hold on to from other people and not understanding how they're doing that. So purging becomes not only an occasionally good thing, but an essential. Especially if we want to get to a place in our life where we maintain our own experience. So I'd ask, you know, just to consider how often have you learned things in your life? How often have you applied things and you've done them for a period of time and then you may have stopped? And then you may have picked it up again, and then you may have stopped, and then you may have picked it up again. There's a very good reason for this. And the very nature of our own life is because when we take on from our life and people around us, we desire to become a who and we fit in. And in fitting in, we have certain things that we compromise in order to maintain a balance. And when we start to perform and move beyond that, it's when we start to move outside of the resonance of the people that exist around us, outside of that particular dynamic. And as we start to move beyond that, within us, what we're holding onto of others becomes most important. And we as individuals, we don't wanna leave people behind. But what we would rather do is hold ourselves back. And we do this consistently. That when we start to create something or have our own success, we are challenged by the thoughts of how I'll be received. Will I be received? We're challenged by the fact of leaving people behind and challenging the very dynamic of who we were before. When we are given 
the momentum and when we start to move forward in our life, we have to make decisions. And those decisions that we need to make are generally about letting go. We are not shown in our own life how to gracefully say no. We are not shown how to gracefully release. And just consider the word release. Release is about, the word lease is to go into an arrangement, to enter into contract. To release is to release the contract that we had or the relationship that we had and start a new one. It's not a bad thing, it's an amazing thing as we start to allow our growth to be seen, as we start to elevate our own self, if we're not prepared to release what we had, we're not gonna allow anything new to come into our own life. But we continue to keep trying to tiptoe through things without upsetting anyone in order to find our own truth and to find our own experience of life. And the very nature of finding our own experience of life is the example that we become. Now, when we're an example to people, we have people that resonate with us, that want to be a part of our life, that want to contribute to what it is that we're doing. And it's interesting that as we start to move forward in our life, that people judge us and want to hold us back. This is the very nature of our own resonance, being able to rise above that, being able to deal with that, being able to let go of the judgments that are placed upon us. The very nature, nature of growth is that we're going to expose ourselves and exposing ourselves couples with judgment. And if we don't know how to deal with judgment, we will never have greater exposure, greater expansion in our own life. Judgment is not something to sit there in judgment of others and say, why do they keep complaining about me? Why do they see things like that? Why don't they agree with me? Why don't they see what I see? Why are they mean to me? Whatever it may be, it's our individual capacity to be able to move beyond the judgments, our capacity to deal with the darknesses in life that allow us to grow. We don't move towards a greater ex expansion in our own life by chasing light, by chasing happiness, by chasing love. These are all results of our capacity to go through those things that are difficult in our life. Not by going in and embracing what is easy and simple and taking the low road. It's about us confronting the very nature of what exists within us. And I can suggest to you that's not an easy process. But for most of us, we don't want to do the work. We don't want to go through the letting go and the releasing because we want to hold on to and we want to maintain what we already know. The letting go, the graceful release is not only important, it is essential. I, I want to just take this back to a physical example, something that you may be able to relate to. If anyone's ever done a juice fast, a water fast, or any type of fasting at all, and I mean the type of fasting that you would do to detox, to, to release no, I suppose impurities from the body. Now, if you've ever done this, what happens after the first couple of days of not eating or anything else like that, but having maybe a type of juice that you're having to, to release from your body, is you start to feel nauseous. You start to feel uncomfortable. You start to feel ill at ease. But because you're in the fast and you understand why that's happening, you celebrate that feeling because you recognize, wow, this is really working. There's something going on. It's not comfortable. I don't enjoy it, but it is taking me where I want to be. It's allowing me to get rid of all of this junk and this gunk that I've been holding on to. Now, I want you to consider if you didn't understand the process of fasting and you weren't even aware of what was going on. If you suddenly started to feel ill and sick, you would question it. You'd fight against it. Your body would shut down in trying to defend yourself against this feeling. And you would fight it. Fight it and push against it. Allow, not allowing those toxins to release, but holding on to what you know, what you're already aware of. The very nature of fasting gives an example for each of us that as we move through that and we allow ourselves to recognize and understand what's going on, we can not only move with it, but we can expand that experience and develop it further. Now, this is exactly what happens in our own life with fasting, that we go through that and then we have an experience where our thoughts become more clarified, where our life becomes more clarified. We want to eat in a different way. We want to experience things in a much more heightened way than what we did previously because of what we have let go of. Now, that's a, that's a simple thing or a simpler thing to do in a physical state because you can see, you can touch, you can feel. 
And this is the nature of being caught up in our five senses that are dictated by the physical state of our own life. But when we start to move into our own truth, our frequency, our frequency signature, the energetic base of what we are, this is unseen. We can't touch and feel that. We have to come to understand it. We have to be able to utilize a greater capacity and our most native capacity that exists within us. Now, if we don't know how to do that, again, we're going to get caught up in thinking why something happened. It might have been this, it might have been that. It could have been because of those reasons. Well, that person once said this to me, and I think that's what it's been caused by. But if we don't understand how to navigate our unseen and our immeasurable self, we are going to continue to keep buying into the knowledge that we already have of our past. We're going to keep buying into our experiences and what we've been told and what we've been taught. So the very nature of purging is about as an individual to understand how to start to release those toxins that we've taken on, that we may not have seen, that we may not be aware of, but continue to keep directing our thoughts. When we start to do this, we can define and recognize a clarity within our own selves if we're prepared to go through those darker moments. If we're prepared for a period of time to let go of the way that we had a relationship, to recognize the addictions that we have to the people, to the things around us, and start to make choices for our own self. I would suggest to anyone, if you're not going through a, a consistent and regular practice of purging, you are going to find yourself and often too late in a situation where you're going to be confronted by a disease, by an illness and a sickness and believe that that's a natural state. It is not a natural state. It is not a normal thing for us to be sick, for us to be unhealthy. It is completely unnatural to be in a state of our own life where we're in a disease and the problem is for most of us, we wait until we're confronted by a diagnosis that is terrifying before we actually choose to do something about it, before we become present and aware of it. If we're connecting with ourselves each and every day, those things don't slip by. We become present to our own awareness and we start to understand it. The very nature of sickness and disease is simply the separation of the energetic and the physical not operating together as one. But... Just understand this, when the physical is holding on to, and I want you to understand, your physical body is like a hard drive. It takes upon information and holds it within the cellular structure, in all of the physical aspects of what you are. It holds on to that. And if that resonance is so distinctly different from your natural core, there is going to be a separation. There's going to be confusion. There's going to be more than one voice that's running around in your head running the show because there's many different elements of what you are that have been created in order to justify not coming together with your own self. And this is why purging is so significantly important. This is why a simple practice each morning, which I'll share with you now. And what I'm asking for those of you that are doing that is to go through and do this practice each and every day and to come back each over the next couple of weeks and start to let me know the experience that you're having to share with you. Because I can guarantee if you do this right, not only will you overcome any situations coming happening in your life, but you will allow yourself to move into a place maybe of unseen clarity. And I'm suggesting to you, and do be aware, it will challenge you. It will bring up things that are toxic. It's the very nature of it. It is to let go of those things that do not belong within you, that you've become attached to, reliant upon. And they can be thoughts, they can be energies, they can be ideas, but they are the things that are inhibiting your natural course of your own expression to come through. So this particular practice, it's about five minutes each morning it needs to be no more than that. And I would recommend setting a timer, especially when you first start doing this, because the challenge that you will have for many people in being in a place where when we start to purge and release, what we're choosing to do is move into a space in our life that we haven't been to before. 
So this is the very notion of fear. It is moving into the unknown. Everything in our life is unknown. There is no such thing as fear. It's just our misunderstanding of how to navigate the unknown. Fear is a concept that people hold on to in the excuse of moving into their own truth. I don't believe in fear. I don't buy into fear. I recognize just at this moment that I don't understand how to move through this particular moment in my life. I'm not going to allow myself to degenerate into such a space where I infect everyone else around me with my own negativity because I've chosen to not understand myself. Navigation of the unknown. So this particular practice, five minutes each morning, it requires everything you already have, nothing more. It requires a pen and paper. Now, ideally, I would ask you to sit and find a space that is consistent for you. Ideally, maybe a desk, a seat that you have, a space that is comfortable for you. And I'd ask you to get a pen and paper. Once you've got that pen and paper, is to sit down and to write with the intention of releasing everything that does not belong to purge. Now, here's the important part. When you get this pen and paper, as you write down exactly what is coming through your awareness at that particular point, as if a conduit from through you onto the page is being done. Do not interrupt it. Do not become grammatically correct. Do not suggest that it doesn't make sense. Do not do anything else except be an audience, except be taking dictation from yourself. Now, the key here is there may be some difficulty that comes. There may be some challenging ideas that arise. There may be you sitting there going, I wonder what I'm doing. Am I doing this right? Write that down. There might be just a sense of darkness. Write down darkness. If there's nothing, write down nothing. But be the complete orator and capture of your particular awareness at that particular point in time. For some, it'll flow a little bit more. For others, it'll be a bit more challenging. But if you're seeing green spiraling circles, write down green spiraling circles. But the intention of these five minutes is to purge and release. Now, for some of you, as you do this, what you may find is that some dark thoughts arise from I hate myself. I'm no good. I'm not worthy. No one loves me. I don't want to be here anymore. I hate my life. You know, the problem with these thoughts are when they're not expressed. The very nature of our own life in expressing something is to release it. Too often when people are going through these great moments of tribulation and releasing and letting go because they're growing and what's being pushed to the surface is all of the gunk and the crap. They stop because they don't want to be seen in a particular way for a momentary part of their life. It's to understand what we're releasing is not what we are, it's what we were. And if we do not have a capacity or an allowance of doing that, we will maintain consistently what we were. And we'll continue to have this fight against trying to change and trying to grow and to have more in our life where we continue to hold on to the anchors of the past. This particular process is powerful because it's simple. For many, you will dismiss it. And for many before have until they allow themselves to sit in that particular space. And that's why the five minutes is important that you sit there because your mind will step in as soon as you start to release and as soon as you start to let go of the mind, let go of the ego, it's going to become more pronounced. It's going to start to distract you and want to direct you in a whole range of other areas of life. The very notion of this is to go through, sit down, be there for five minutes, pen and paper and write. These unexpressed thoughts, these things that we hold on to, these stories we keep telling ourselves. If we do not know how to release them, and if we do not release them, they will become the very soundtrack of our life. We will talk about all the work we've done and how hard we've worked and what, the way that we've lived and 
everything else that we've wanted to create in our own life. But if we do not find ourselves allowing ourselves to purge, if we are having thoughts, and I want you to, and this is a serious issue. There's many people that are dying of suicide at the moment around the world. Suicide exists for people holding on to thoughts with inside themselves that they do not let go of. If I'm having a thought that I want to kill myself, if I can express that and let that go, I let it go. If I hold on to it, it continues to maintain within me like a thorn in my side until eventually I have to act upon it, until it consumes me and takes me over because I believe so much in the fiction and the deceit that I'm creating. If we do not have a capacity or a way of purging before we start to learn and grow, the learning that we have will be based upon very illegitimate foundations. It will work for a period of time, but it will always fall over. I share this particular process after 15, 20 years of working in this space and understanding that when people apply things in their life, so often it doesn't work. Sometimes it's a teaching. Sometimes it's the application. But I can guarantee one thing, if we do not purge and if we do not have the capacity to release what it is that we have, the greatest meditation, the greatest energetic healing or whatever it is that we take on in our own life will be temporary. As we continue to choose to maintain those things that we're holding on to. To learn to detox, to release is not only important, it is essential. Five minutes each day. And I want you to consider there's a, a profound and a deeper understanding in this that you all experience. And, and maybe you'd want to ask why it's the case that I get guided into things, practices. And, I, and I'd suggest to you that most meditation and finding silence within ourselves is a very advanced practice. But I want to ask you that finding silence, finding connection within ourselves can be done with a pen and paper, very simply. If you can get a pen and paper and try and write and think of something else at the same time, you'd be that one unique person that could. It's impossible to think of something else and write at the same time. It brings us into concert with our own self by starting to do them. And when we can understand that the much deeper practices that can come to provide a foundation, to provide a base before we can start to go in and start working deeper with frequencies, starting to work much more with a greater landscape of life that exists beyond us. It all begins with purging and our capacity in each and every moment to let go. When we have great things or a new relationship coming into our life, we are only going to infect that relationship if we don't let go of the previous one, if we don't let go of our experiences of the previous ones. Every new relationship we're having that's coming into our life, we're being asked to leave something else behind, to be able to bring our attention and our honour to that particular new relationship in this moment. We as individuals, one of the great things to purge at this particular point in our life is letting go of the word they. This is a great observation that you can start to look at in your life each and every day is how often and how unconsciously you use the word they, what they have done to me, what they did to me. And look at they and rather transpose that with I. What I am going to do, what I am aware of, or what I am not aware of. What I do not understand. And allowing myself to elevate into a place where I'm going to stimulate my own understanding, my own want to learn at a greater capacity than what I already am. The willingness to let go and to release is to recognize that I already have everything I need in this moment, in every particular moment of my life. It's to recognize and come into your own understanding that when was I ever taught to let go, to release. The very notion of our own life to move forward is to make decisions in our own life that change the way that we live. But we cannot make decisions that are gonna have significance in our life if the base and the foundation that we're sitting upon is not true, it is not us. And I can suggest to everyone that we take on so much in our own life each and every day in every single way. You can see this from a phone call coming in. When you have a phone call 
and it's someone who you love and who inspires you, who makes you laugh and, and you'd like to spend as much time as you can with, you automatically become enlivened by that phone call or a name popping up on your phone. But when you see someone's name on there that you don't want to, that you are burdened by, you take that on and you hold on to it. Now, this is happening consistently and regularly through each and every day. You see, for most of us, we're thinking that we need to learn some greater practice, that we need to have some awakening within our own self. What we need to do is release all of the stuff that we are carrying on. We have such an amazing capacity as the types of beings that we are. We are the greatest creation of our own creator. Now, as individuals, our capacity to expand beyond that is to understand what we have by letting go of what we have taken on. It's to understand in our own lives, if we can acknowledge what we are, what we are doing, what we are creating, it's only then that we can move past it. But if we refuse to, at moments in our life, to suggest that I am unhappy, that I'm argumentative, that I am dissatisfied or that I am brilliant. If we don't allow ourselves to accept those things and acknowledge those things and the presence of them in our own life, we as individuals will never be able to move past them because if they don't exist, they will continue to be a part of our life that we maintain. And whether it's positive or negative in your own perception, most of us are coming to terms with the negatives in our own life and not allowing ourselves to own them and be exposed to them and release them. But where our real growth happens is in our own brilliance. And when we can start to have conversations openly and honestly and directly about where we're brilliant, where it is that we are significant beyond measure, because it's when we start to have those types of conversations with the people around us that we start to own the very nature of what we are, that we can start to inspire conversations beyond complaints, but we can start to move into the most powerful part of our own self is our ability to create. It is the very nature of why we are here. We are not here to fix things. We are not here to change things. We are here to create. And creation requires us to go into a space that is unmeasured, that is undefined and to navigate that space. But when we go into that new space and we're carrying the past, the pains, those things that we need to share with everyone else that we are feeling so dissatisfied within our own life, we need to be our own audience in that space and allow that to be released so that when we do have the pleasure of sharing space with people around us, we can be full and true because we've given ourselves that time and attention to release and let go of the things that don't resonate in our life. But if not, we'll find ourselves cantankerous, argumentative. We'll have a bee in our bonnet that we won't want to let go of. I cannot encourage enough the practice of purging. I cannot encourage it more than, look, we work as an organization with teaching people in a very short space of time how to work very deeply with frequency, how to overcome any condition or illness in their own life, how to move beyond any situation or experience they believe that they have, how to move into an uncharted space. You know, people talk of the Akashic records. These exist within us. But the ability to be able to access something so significant, and I don't believe in the terms of the words that these things are given, this is just our own wisdom and understanding that exists freely within us all the time. It's just a matter of learning how to understand, to navigate that. But I want to suggest this to you. Most people want to go from nothing completely into that space. But the issue is if we continue to keep carrying on low-level thoughts, low-level frequencies, problems, issues that we're having in our own life and we are not prepared to let go of them, we are not going to maintain our relationship with a greater level of significance. And the important part is that when we let go, we find ourselves naturally coming to an elevated state, like a balloon rising and throwing the weight out of it. But if we don't throw the weight out, we've got to keep working, we've got to keep burning fuel, we've got to keep forcing and pushing ourselves and working hard to get into those places. 
I'm not saying that there's not work that is required of us individually, but that work is only to undo what we've already created to get back to our own truth and our own self is getting to the place where we have enough energy and space that is dedicated to ourselves to go in to discover and understand ourselves. But when we're not having the capacity to understand ourselves is because we're trying to fix things. We're trying to make things different to what they are because they are not working out for us in some way. When we allow ourselves to get through a state of purging, we can start to bring an attention to our life to start to understand. Now, I know some people use in a, in a, the word inner standing and overstanding now because they believe understanding to be something that's subjected to. But to me, I see understanding that once you understand something, it becomes a part of your foundation. It now stands under you and it becomes a part of your elevation in life. And when you understand it, you don't need to go back into it. You continue to move forward from it. When you understand how to move through and how to connect with your own self, it is not a temporary practice. You understand it. It's consistent. Understanding is taking an awareness and actioning it. For most of us, we get excited by an insight and we start telling everyone about the insight that we've had. Therefore, releasing and letting go of it without actually applying and acting it. When we have an insight that comes to us, it's important for us to understand it and then understand how to express it. But most often when we have an elevation in our own life, we go and start telling everyone about this amazing insight and this thing that happened to us without understanding it ourselves. And then it becomes up to everyone else around us to tell us whether that was worthy or brilliant. And we believe in the letting go of it that we have, we've done. And we then get another insight later on that we're not acting upon and integrating and creating with our own life. Because our audience we've determined is those people around us in how we are accepted. When we are choosing to understand ourselves, we are accepting ourselves. We see ourselves as our own authority. And when the information we are having that comes to us, we then learn to understand how to act upon it in a way that is congruent, a way that is authentic. But this all goes back to, until we learn to purge, until we can remove the toxins that exist in our life, until we can let go of those things that continue to keep interrupting our own native experience. When I say native, I mean something that is occurring within us without effort. Natural is something that we learn, but native is something that is of us. To allow ourselves to sit in audience. Now, I mean, just consider there is such a code, there is such a map that exists within us, but whilst we don't give that audience, whilst we don't have the humility to say, I don't understand how to do that. If we're not making that our charter to come to interpret and recognize everything that we are, not who we are as determined by around us, as everyone's going to tell us, but what we are and to make the strength of that louder than all of the voices outside of us. It's then that we come to master our life. It's then we can start to make decisions and chart a course that we can be proud of that we can resonate with, that becomes effortless in our own life. But those distractions that stop us maintaining our progress are all the toxins that we hold on to, all the judgments that we have. And it's the purging that exercise I shared with you before in its most simple five minutes a day, allowing yourself to go through and do that and write it down each and every day. I would suggest to you one thing, is you don't need to read what you've written. Once you've written it, release it, throw it away, get rid of it. Do not hold on to it. For some of you, if you feel the need to, you can hold on to it for a period of a week. Go back and read after a week and just to align with your own experience. Read it at the end of that week, not every day. And then once you do, Start to understand the changes and the differences and what you are holding on to and what you're now not thinking and experiencing. 
we are accumulating and taking on so much each and every way in each and every day. There is an absolute significance of what it is that we are moving through ourselves at any particular moment. And the thing is, if we are holding on to toxins in our own life, when those same things re-enter our own self, we will find more and we'll hold on to more because they're familiar to us. They bring ease and comfort. In the same way, when we are away and we want to just get to our home and we want to be in our own nest and space, it might be comfortable for a period of time, but familiarity breeds contempt. The very nature of what it is that we have within us is going to be found by stepping into the unknown continually, not occasionally, but consistently. And in order to do that, we need a navigation system that allows us to do that. It begins with purging. It begins with the releasing and letting go. I would say that this is more significant for anyone than any other practice in my experience. I'm not, it's not saying specifically this practice, but the nature of purging and to be able to complete that consistently and regularly each and every day. It's a natural part of a process. I want you to consider in a very evidentiary way, if you did not purge your body every single day, if you weren't going to the bathroom, In a short period of time, you become so toxic that you would not be able to live anymore. There is a significance that's demonstrated us in our physical experience. It's understanding how to utilize that to become true to our own energetic frequency based experience. It is what's directing the show, but for many of us, it's suppressed. It's caught up in how we fit in and it's caught up in allowing us to believe that when it works occasionally. For us to be in connection, in alignment, in an integrated state, in a quantum state with our own self, we need to be able to remove those things that are inhibiting that. And that begins with purging. I'd ask each of you to, to practice this. Each day, first thing in the morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just open up in a moment just to some questions. So if anyone does have some questions of anything that we've covered so far, or just wants further clarity on the process itself that I've shared, by all means, if you have, and look, I, one thing that's most important with questions, the very nature of asking a question in our own life brings vulnerability. It causes us to have to accept that we don't know, but the very nature of all life begins from that particular point. I don't know. All learning, all expansion starts from, I don't know. Because it allows us to come into a new understanding, a new awareness. So I would suggest when you are having questions that come to you, not just here, but in any moment of life, ask them and observe yourself sitting and listening to the answer with the intention to act upon it. There's a very important aspect that when we as our own self are not prepared to act upon the information that we receive from ourselves before we receive it, we will receive information that we're not going to act upon. And that's the notion for most of us that we're asking ourselves for insight, for questions, but we're not deciding or have not decided prior that we're going to act upon whatever it is that we receive. We want to test it. We want to check to see if it fits in with our current agenda. And most perfectly, our request is met. As we choose to not act upon the information we receive, we receive information that we're not choosing to act upon. The very nature of trust is to act upon information before it's received. So just consider that with your own self. If you're wanting to build a relationship with trust within your own self, you need to have made the decision. You're going to act upon the information no matter what it is it presents. But in order to do that, you need to develop yourself outside of those toxins. Those interruptions, the addictions, the fallacies and the fictions that we are holding on to, the deceits that we tell ourselves in judgment each and every day. So the most important part that I'd suggest in here 
It's that consistent practice. It's a worst case of not taking on what I'm suggesting here to write each and every day. It is one thing. It is to at least come into a moment at the start of the day to become present to where you're at. Good or bad, up or down, but to become present and aware of your starting point. Because it's from the starting point that all journeys begin. If we don't do this, you're going to find yourself living someone else's day and ultimately someone else's life. All of these sessions are leading towards something that we do at the quantum movement and it's giving an opportunity for each of you to see if that type of journey, that deeper experience is something that you want to go on. But the nature of these sessions is to give an insight into that. So I hope you've enjoyed what we've shared today or what we what I've shared today. Um, there was a couple of me, but um, uh, if there's any questions that anyone has, anything about the process, anything about that we've covered, uh, any comments that, that may exist, by all means, now's the time to ask questions and I'll go through and answer those to the, the best of my capacity and, and share what it, whatever it is I can with you. Good morning, just seeing a couple of comments there. Um, I will suggest to those of you that go through and start to do this practice, you're going to be confronted with not wanting to do it. You're going, you're going to have a whole range of excuses that will come up. You're going to have a whole range of distractions, distractions that will arise. And that's normal because as you start to create a new habit, as you start to take new actions, and you're unaware of the previous routine that you're in, because I could suggest to every single person, one of the most difficult things that people have when they start to introduce something new into their life is they're completely unaware of what they've been doing up to this particular point. And if you're not aware of what you have been doing previously, and you start to introduce something new into that, expect that just to move with you. It's not going to happen. We need to become present to and aware of when we start to do something new that there's going to be a resistance because there's a range of habits, conscious and unconscious, that I'm already contributing and buying into and supporting. We need to honour those, but then understand in the honour of those, the change that we're now choosing to make. It takes courage. None of this is easy. It is very simple. I would suggest to you. To ask yourself for every single thing in life exists to the capacity of what we are prepared to let go of. The richness in our life is about what we're able to release because it's in the understanding of what we believe that we can create moving forward. It's a demonstration of trust in our own relationship with ourselves. It is an essential thing that is often forgotten because it's not so sexy to learn to release and to let go, to purge. But it is of significant importance. essential. I, I would find in my own life, um, and, and I'm sure each of you have an experience of people around you that present an example to you, of holding on to a relationship they don't like, because, but they don't believe they'll get any better. A career that's okay, that pays the bills. So many people are holding on to what does not serve them. And I challenge you to find a person, an experience even in your own life, when you've been bold to let go and release. That when you've been bold enough to let go and release, that something to replace that has not appeared in your life. 
It happens every single time. But that never happens if we don't have the courage to first start letting go. Missy, uh, every, we're, we're on again every Tuesday for the next two weeks beyond this. So two more sessions beyond this. Same time between six and seven, just to answer your question, if that's if that's what you want to tell. We're also, uh, I'm from, I haven't mentioned where I'm from and what we do. I'm from the quantum movement. Uh, we do have a, at this stage, a, a public Facebook page. We are doing a launch um, in the coming weeks and months uh, of, of a number of things that we do that we're offering first time to the general public. Um, and the reason I say that is because our work prior to this has been private and by referral. But um, yeah, if you want to follow what it is we do, we're, we are on the quantum movement uh, on Facebook. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a pleasure to see. But I, I would suggest find it within yourself this week. Ask the questions that you want answers to of yourself and others. Start to allow yourself to release and go through a practice and don't find yourself two or three days later saying, I didn't make the time or I forgot to. If you're serious, make the time. Set an alarm. If you need to get up 10 minutes earlier to do that, set an alarm to get up 10 minutes earlier. This is your life. What you choose to do with that becomes your choice. It's not going to be given to you, but you can surely create it in a way that you're proud of, that you want to manifest more in your life. And let me suggest this to you, that with the purging, those that attempt to manifest without first creating space and purging and releasing will only manifest more of what they don't want. They may manifest to escape from what they have in order to release or get away from what it is that's a burden in their life, but it won't be maintained. Purging is essential before we can learn to manifest. Not just occasionally, but it is critical to our own experience. I want to say thank you very much for each of you. Um, it says we know more questions coming through. And I'll just check that. We'll be back next Tuesday between six and seven. You can find us on at the Quantum Movement. Um, if you're wanting to find out more about what it is that we do, uh, you can send a message to us through that particular page. Um, I think there's a send message button at the top of the, the Facebook page and you'll be kept up to date with what it is that we're doing and a, a pre-release that we have coming up in, in a short period of time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the time and attention that you've all provided, especially at this um, early hour in Australia, but uh, it's a great day. Um, go out, be the example that you want to see and until we meet again on the inside, enjoy you.